It's this week's UK car news roundup and we're starting things off with the RAC website. Majority of drivers believe changing the MOT to every two years is a dangerously bad idea. Drivers have serious concerns about the government's plans to change the compulsory MOT from every year to every two years to reduce the cost of living, with many believing it will lead to a rise in the number of unsafe vehicles on the road. More than half the 1,435 drivers surveyed by the RAC felt changing the MOT to every two years was a bad idea. Just over a fifth said they thought it was a good idea, while the same proportion were unsure. I think it's a bad idea. By the way, those survey numbers, 1,400 people, it's negligible really. You can't really take any kind of firm opinion from a, a survey that only gets responses from 1,400 people. But um, I personally think it's a bad idea, a very bad idea. I know some on here will disagree with me as they have on this subject in the past. Citroen reveals new retro logo for the electric era. Um, it looks like that. I really like that, actually. I think that's a big improvement on the old one, albeit not dramatically different. We're at auto car now, by the way. Uh, Citroen Ollie concept is a radical vision of a £23,000 family EV. Sustainable electric cars previewed by fun and exciting concept weighing a 1,000 kilos. Now look at this thing. This is one of the most bananas looking cars I've ever seen. It's got a completely flat windscreen, bonkers doors. I think we can call that interior minimalist. I must admit, I just sat sort of slack-jawed looking at these pictures when I first saw them. I mean, the thing looks absolutely bonkers. Obviously, it is only a concept, but when you look at the Citroen Ami that came out, people would look at that and think, oh, that's never going into production. And sure enough, you can buy one. The Oli is a new concept car illustrating the brand's renewed commitment to affordability and sustainability, her heralding the array of new technologies earmarked for upcoming cars. Headlines are a hypothetical price tag of about 22 and a half grand and a weight of around a tonne, plus a 248 mile range from a relatively small 40 kilowatt hour battery and a single electric motor. However, it's the concept's design and construction that brought the biggest implications for production bound cars. The front and rear bumpers are identical, which saves them a load of money in terms of tooling and environmental impact. And of course, you only need to have one sort of spare part on your shelf. On the whole, the car is made from 50% recycled material and is 100% recyclable. So everything that makes up that car can be recycled. Range boosting aero was a key part of the brief, but the vertical windscreen is a defining design cue. It was mainly about challenging convention, but also yielded benefits included significantly reduced material and labor requirements. You would think that would be absolutely devastating for the aerodynamism of the car, but obviously it's not. Obviously it still works. The roof and bonnet are made from cardboard compound rather than steel. That might sound suspect, but creator BASF's use of the honeycomb pattern has resulted in something strong enough for you to stand on. A coating provides additional strength while helping to keep out the rain and UV rays. 20 inch aluminium and steel wheels are cheaper to produce than the equivalent alloy wheels and weigh only 6 kilos more. They're shot in experimental Goodyear Eagle Go tyres that will supposedly last 62,000 miles, which means less waste. What's more, the wheel arches can be removed with household tools, allowing for quick damage repairs. So the efficiency of it is almost double the efficiency of any EV currently on the market, which helps it get 249 miles of range from just a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack. And from what I can see, there's no sort of suggestion of a 0-62 time in here, but you'd imagine it's not going to be quick. The infotainment system is a, a bring your own device approach, which means that you'll have something like a cassette player that you stick your phone in to and that will power the system that's exactly what a concept car should be it should be something groundbreaking and daring that gives them ideas to then implement on new production cars and there are plenty of people around that love their old v8 and they've got their classic car and they've got something or something a bit special a bit of a performance car that they'd like to have there'll be a lot of two car households certainly coming up in the next few years where they have one hopefully fairly cheap EV and one car that they love as maybe a weekend car or something. I think there are some really good ideas buried in all that madness there and uh, I like that. Right, final bit of news from Citroen is there's a new electric C3 coming with a rugged reinvention. And they've basically said that there's not one idea on the Citroen Ollie 
that they're not considering for the new C3. That could be very interesting. Uh, Geely acquires 7.6% stake in Aston Martin. Geely obviously owns LEVC, owns Polestar, owns Volvo, uh, Smart, uh, Lincoln Co, Lotus, the list goes on. Uh, we know Aston Martin have been struggling. There's been some news around that in, in recent weeks. And they've acquired a 7.6% stake in the company. The Chinese giant taking stake in British firm's transformative £654 million funding round. Vauxhall Astra GSE launches electrified performance brand. First entry into new sporting sub-brand is 222 brake horsepower plug-in hybrid with firmed up chassis. It's going to have a 1.6 litre turbocharged petrol engine and 12.4 kilowatt hour battery but its total output is to be boosted from 178 horsepower from the standard Astra plug-in hybrid to 222 brake horsepower. Vauxhall's yet to announce any performance figures but the mechanically identical Peugeot 308 225 plug-in hybrid has a 0-62 time of 7.7 seconds and 146 mile per hour top speed and an electric only range of 37 miles. It's a very good looking car that new Astra. I went to a drive day yesterday and um, they had two Astras there and I was really hoping to drive one of them but one of them conked out. It started making some strange noises so they took that one off and, and the other one was just far too popular all day but um, it's a very very good looking car. Hopefully that failure of one yesterday was a bit of a one off. No seatbelt, a factor in 30% of UK road deaths in 2021. Some 1,558 people lost their lives in crashes last year, up from 1,460 in pre-pandemic 2019. Department for Transport said that 34% of men killed in car accidents weren't wearing a seatbelt compared to 20% of women. Stats also showed that people aged between 17 and 29 were the most likely to lose their life when not wearing a seatbelt, making up 40% of the overall figure. Put your seatbelts on, folks. Simple as. So this one, we're on the Coventry Telegraph. Drivers back pay per mile tax instead of fuel duty and VED, survey says. The system would see you pay for every mile you drive in the UK. Nearly half of people support replacing fuel duty and vehicle excise duty with pay-as-you-drive scheme, a new survey suggested. The poll of more than 3,000 UK adults for pressure group campaign for better transport 3,000 adults, it's just not enough to form any kind of opinion with it, indicated that 49% of people are in favour of charging drivers based on how they use vehicles. Majority of respondents, 60%, said they believe vehicle taxation needs reforming. A pay-as-you-drive scheme, also known as road pricing, would charge drivers based on their mileage. Um, obviously, we need to wait and see what comes of this and, and what a pay-per-mile scheme might possibly look like should it ever come to fruition. But one thing you can be sure of is um, they won't bring in a new taxation system to make the general public better off. That just doesn't happen, folks. So be careful what you wish for. Right now over on Auto Express, and we're looking at UK speed camera tolerances. Met Police has lowered speed limit enforcement threshold. Met Police has lowered its speed enforcement threshold and speed and fines in London have gone up. Uh, basically, they're taking the tolerance on speed cameras from 10% plus 3 miles an hour. Uh, that's being reduced by 1 mile an hour, so it's now going to be 10% plus 2 miles an hour will be the tolerance and the margin. So if you're going 24 in a 20 or 35 in a 30, you're going to get a ticket. So the new Polestar 3 is set to be revealed on the 12th of October at an exclusive event in Denmark. I'll have to check the post, but I don't think I've had an invite for that one yet. Uh, as we mentioned last week, the Polestar 3 is just going to be a shade under 80 grand. 380 miles of range and, and room for five adults and a bit of luggage. It does seem quite appealing, but 80 grand is a lot of money, isn't it? Citroen Berlingo 2CV Fugonet revives classic 2CV van style. Check this out. I like this thing. I think this is cool. I like that a lot, actually. It looks like it's going to have the 1.2 petrol engine that you get in loads of Citroens and Peugeots and what have you. Um, and the, there'll be an electric version which will be based on the e Berlingo. You've got to think that's going to be at the Paris Motor Show, which is coming up very, very soon. Um, I'm not going to that, by the way. I did mention I might be going to that. I'm not. I haven't got any money. So 
And then finally this week, Bond in Motion, No Time to Die exhibition at the National Motor Museum in Bewley is to finish next month. Bewley's just up the road from me. It's a great day out if you've never been before. They've got this James Bond exhibition on at the moment and it ends next month. So if you want to go, you need to get there before the 15th of November. It must be boring listening to me asking for subscribers every week and I understand that. But without subscribers, I can't do it. Okay. And without people coming back and watching, I can't do it. We're getting to the point now. The views are getting pretty rough on these news videos, to be fair. And uh, if it doesn't pick up fairly shortly, I think I'll stop doing them. Um, because they do take a lot of time. People think I just sit and go onto other people's websites and read things off, which I do. However, it takes a lot of research and it takes a hell of a lot of editing. Please support. Please share on social media. Please subscribe. And thank you once again to all those people that bought me a coffee in the last week and to all those monthly coffee subscribers. Thanks for watching this one. Please go and watch this one now because I think you'll like that. Maybe not, but go and watch it anyway. Uh, thanks again. See you soon. Bye.